Good evening. Welcome to our Bible study. <clears throat> I'm going to read jokes for the first little bit. My lawyer called and said, can I ask can I ask you two questions? He said, of course. What's the second question? There's no ha-ha. There's supposed to be a ha-ha from the room. <clears throat> French fries are not cooked in France. They are cooked in Greece. <laughs> oh, see the good in? Say good in. This one, I don't know if this... Oh, this one's good. Uh, what's the difference between a guitar and a fish? You can tune a guitar, but you can't tune a fish. <clears throat> what kind of ghost has the best hearing? The eeriest. Is that Nate? I guess you Nate there. Why did the students eat their homework? Because their teacher told them it was a piece of cake. If you're joining us, please say hello in the comments so we can uh, see who's here. Why did the chicken cross the playground? To get to the other slide. <clears throat> oh yeah, I read this one earlier. I don't know if this is going to translate well. Oh, bonjour, Rick. Or bonjour, as you have it spelled. Oh, the clerks are there. Hey, clerks. And Gail. Hey, Gail. Uh, what do you call a fish with no eyes? A fish. Oh, hey, fisks. What do you do when a dinosaur sneezes? You get out of the way. I don't know if that one's very funny. Nobody laughed at that one. <laughs> uh, what happens once in a minute, twice in a moment, but never in a decade? The letter M. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey Brenda, Brenda's here too. Uh, okay. I'm going to do one more, and that's it. Yeah. Why does Superman get invited to dinners? Because he is a supper hero. Is that a good closer? <clears throat> so, much to my surprise, I didn't expect this one bit. There's a present here for me. See, we have a gift. It's got a bow. That I think is going to fall off if I tilt it. Yeah. So it looks, it's not wrapped, so I kind of know what it is. It says to Father on it. I know that's mirrored, but you can't see it, but it's there. And we have, it's called a Vivo Book, and it's a Asus laptop. When I was at the, at the computer store, I always thought it was Asus, but he says, no, 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 it's Asus, Asus laptop. And it's even got Intel inside. It's supposed to be a fancy, nice laptop. So let's open it up and take a look, if I can. Right away. Oh, okay, there we go. I open it up. So these things have like, uh, they have, you know, some covering over the laptop. So it's really nice. It says in the search of incredible. So it's definitely an incredible laptop that's inside here. So we open it up. No, it's a piece of bread. <laughs> so it's not a laptop. It's a piece of bread. So what was on the outside did not reflect what was on the inside. We had something that was inauthentic and that's what our lesson is talking about tonight um, again it's going to be a, maybe a 20 minute lesson or so uh, comments are encouraged so please uh, type them in the comment section of Facebook and yeah we're going to discuss this idea of, of being authentic uh, we saw the present you know we saw the laptop or what appeared to be a laptop on the outside but on the inside a piece of bread you can't program anything with a piece of bread you can eat bread so that's partially a blessing I guess but sometimes things are much better than what they seem. You know, they seem like they're going to be super awesome and great, and they are kind of a letdown. It's not the truth. They don't match what the image that they're portraying. And sometimes it happens with people, too. Uh, you can put on an outer appearance that doesn't match your inner self. And you might not be what you appear to be. Again, that can happen with people, with things. And we are going to focus on the person side of things. Uh, again, it was a present as the example, but that does happen with people too. Uh, oh, Rick says that's why you keep the receipt, just in case you get bread instead of a laptop. I don't know if that happens often. But it's one of those things where sometimes people aren't appear what they seem. That's actually happening with me right now. Uh, it looks like I'm wearing nice business casual clothing because I've got this nice polo shirt on that I wore to work today. But underneath, 
I'm actually wearing shorts. You know, I'm wearing casual stuff. No, Evan's shocked on the side. He's surprising. So even me right now, I'm, I'm being somewhat inauthentic. You know, I'm not being what I appear to be. So what is authenticity? Uh, I looked up the definition. So what is authenticity de defined? And it's the quality of being real or true. So it's the quality of being real or true. So being what you reflect. You're, you're trying, you, you are showing what you actually are. It's being real or true. Uh, there's a quote that uh, I like from Mark Twain. And it's something I can kind of relate to to a certain extent. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. And that's very true. Sometimes you can uh, lie in certain situations or maybe tell a white lie or maybe mislead certain people to a certain way for some reason that might benefit you. And you have to remember that for the rest of your life because it's not true. You have to actually make a point to remember that sort of thing. And so if you tell the truth all the time, you don't actually have to remember anything. You don't have to keep this log book of lies. And so there's something to be said in being honest and being authentic. So that leads to our first question. Again, please respond in the comments if you have a comment or uh, even if you have any comment relating to the subject that doesn't actually answer the question, that's fine too. Uh, throw it in there so we can talk about it. What is the difference between not being authentic and showing your best side? So am I being dishonest by wearing shorts and a polo shirt? By kind of putting on my, my, my best upper side, I guess. You know, I'm showing the, the, the better dressed person is on the top half. So that's what I'm showing. So is that something that is be, not being authentic? Uh, apparently this showing your best side is a photography term. Uh, this again, apparently, I don't really, I haven't researched this. I don't really know much about this. But it's a photography term. If you split your face in half, one of those sides is apparently more appealing than the other side. And uh, from what I saw online, research said that it's your left side. Your left side is the side that apparently is more appealing. So when you take pictures, you often see headshots where people are looking off to the side and they're showing one side of their face. That apparently is their best side. One side might be better, but still both sides are true. So if you're putting your best side forward, you're not being dishonest. Uh, you're just showing the best side, you know, that side that, that you know, is your, your best qualities at that time. Uh, Tina says authenticity is when you you is when what you see is what you get. So authenticity is when what you see is what you get, and that's very true. What you see is what you get. You're being honest with yourself. You're being honest with others. I find social media is one of those things that is uh, difficult sometimes when people are trying to be authentic. Uh, Gail says no picture is perfect and we all have flaws. Uh, that's very true. Uh, you know, there's, there's never going to be something that's like 100% perfect in, in every sense. And in social media, that's one thing that happens quite often is that people will put either their best side forward or they might go so far as to start becoming dishonest about it and putting on a false front. And that's a big difference between those two things. Uh, not being authentic implies dishonesty, implies deception. And that's really where you're starting to go too far. Uh, you're trying to throw a side that's not true, a side that's um, essentially hypocritical. You're, you're trying to portray something that you truly are not, which is the opposite of authenticity. And it's one of those things that happens. You might try to portray that you're honest, but in fact, you're a liar. Uh, you might try to portray a certain quality that you don't have. Uh, you try to pretend to be... Uh, maybe a certain role or a certain type of person, but you're not actually that type of person. Uh, back when I used to work at Lens Crafters, uh, so I was a laboratory manager. So we made the glasses in the back, put them all together. We had a lot of machines that we used to make these glasses. So we'd grind the lenses and make them fit into the, the frames. And we had to do maintenance on these machines. So they had these log books that we had that every either day or week or month uh, Tina says the difference is in the motive, and that's very true. Uh, if you're trying to just put on your best side because you want to make a good impression, that's not dishonest. You're still putting on a truthful side. But if your motivation is to be dishonest, then that's, that's where the difference comes. So when we would do maintenance, we would have to do it every morning or every uh, closing day or closing of the day. We'd have to check off these boxes. We'd have to put little check marks by the things we did once a week. We'd have to check off different boxes for different types of maintenance. And... 
there would be periods of time, I can't remember exactly when this would happen, but maybe every six months or a year, uh, the big boss would come in. And he'd come in and he'd make sure that you did your maintenance. He checked your logbooks and he checked your maintenance to make sure it was right. Uh, Brenda Ball has a comment. She says, uh, sometimes you can't always know what the person might be hiding under their face that you can see. Also, not everybody, uh, not everybody will be everything at one time. So sometimes it takes people to warm up to other people. So it takes time sometimes where you put on that impression and it takes time for you to show those true qualities. And again, it kind of gets back to that motive. If you're trying to be dishonest with people, you might not ever show your true qualities. You try to keep that first impression up, you know, that, that kind of false front up. Um, so for maintenance, these guys, some of these other lab managers would come in and they would uh, not be doing their maintenance on a regular basis. So before the big boss came in, they just go back and sit in, sit in the, the desk and just check off weeks and weeks of these little boxes of all the stuff they didn't do. So then they would show that, oh yes, I do my maintenance, look at this. And as long as the machines were in relatively good shape, you know, that would fly, that would work. But sometimes the boss would come in for a surprise visit. They'd just show up. And they, these guys would freak out, They'd be like, whoa, he's coming in, right? And they'd start losing their mind because they'd see they'd have all these empty log books, their maintenance isn't done, their machines aren't clean. And one thing I always tried to do when I was the lab manager is I tried to actually do the maintenance on a regular basis. And I wouldn't be concerned or worried that this boss would come in. Everybody would be talking about how scary it is to have these surprise visits. And I'd be like, well, what's the big deal? If you just do it, you're not going to be concerned if he comes in because you're actually doing your job. So there's a big difference there of being kind of authentic and putting on that false front. And it does come back to motivation. It comes back to that desire. Uh, Melinda says, sometimes we dress and act better than we feel in hopes to lift our spirits. And again, very true. Uh, again, that's one of those things where it's not being dishonest. You're putting on your best side. You're showing your best side. Uh, putting your best foot forward is another phrase for that. And sometimes we try to um, make our, our, I guess, our appearance or the way we're acting around people... Uh, to influence our mood. So maybe we don't really feel like going out. We don't really feel like doing this and we make ourselves do it anyway. Again, we're not being dishonest. We're just trying to lift our moods. We're still trying to be honest in our situation. Uh, Brenda says, sometimes people have not protected themselves and they're not dishonest. They're just not comfortable until they are. And that doesn't mean that they're not authentic. And again, very true. Uh, as long as you're not being deceptive, I think that's where the key is. Uh, if you go to Matthew 23, uh, we're reading a few verses out of Matthew chapter 23, uh, but this whole chapter is, the setting here, is where Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. Uh, I sometimes feel bad for the Pharisees because we kind of paint them all with one big brush and say that they're all like, I don't know, people with not such good qualities. But there were a lot of good Pharisees, but the Pharisees we're talking about here are some of those ones that aren't so good. They're not being talked to very nicely by Jesus in this, in this passage. So these are people that do have flaws, they do have faults, and Jesus is pointing them out. So if you go to Matthew 23, we're going to read the first three verses of Matthew 23. And again, this is Jesus talking to his disciples, and there are Pharisees around there too. So Matthew 23, starting in verse 1, it says, Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. So here we have an example of these Pharisees who are not being authentic. They're not practicing what they preach. They're putting on that idea of, of we want to be holy and we're going to teach you. And this is where Jesus is saying, so do what they tell you to do because they're, they're teaching the law of Moses. They're teaching something that's correct. But they are not practicing that themselves. They're trying to put on that impression of being holy, pure, good people. But in fact, they weren't. Uh, I, I kind of thought, uh, I don't know if you've heard of this term called influencer. It's something in social media now uh, where people actually have jobs posting things on social media. And that's their job. That's, they make money doing this. People pay money. Sponsors pay money for them to have their product shots in these pictures that they post on social media. They have a lot of followers, so they're putting on that good impression. And they'll, they'll make photos and take photos where it looks like they're doing something spontaneous, but it took them all morning to set up this shot. You know, and then they filter it and they change it to make it look perfect. And that's how they, that's what they do for a living. That's their job. And I find the Pharisees are actually sort of similar to that. They're, 
they're influencing the people around them. They're trying to influence them to uh, follow the law of Moses, which is good, but they're not actually doing it themselves. They're not being authentic in that case. Again, I don't want to say all influencers are, are not authentic. They possibly could be. But it is with that idea of putting on that false image. They wanted to put on that image of being holy and perfect when, in fact, they were not. Uh, Jesus could see into their hearts. He had that, uh, that knowledge, so he was able to say that. If you go down to verse 5, and you read the first part of that in Matthew 23, it says, Everything they do is done for people to see. So they, he talks in this passage, he talks in this chapter about how they do all of these things to make them look really holy, make them look really good. And the reason they're doing that is not to please God. You know, they should be doing these things, but their motivation is not to please God. Their motivation was to do it so they can get praise from the people around them. So they were doing it for the wrong reasons. And again, I find that very similar to what's portrayed a lot of time in social media. You're putting things on social media for people to see, and it may not be the actual truth. Uh, you might be doing it, you might, might want to be putting on that image of being a certain way or a certain type of person or, or something, when in fact it's not authentic, it's not true. Uh, they wanted the image of being holy, but their hearts were not holy at all. So that brings to another question. What gets us, or what gets in the way of us being authentic? So if we want to be truthful, we want to uh, be honest, uh, we don't want to be hypocritical, and we don't want to be like the Pharisees. We're putting on that, uh, that false front, you know, in front of people. So what gets in the way of us being authentic? Again, please answer in the comments. Again, that could be part of your, you can answer the question. You can just make any comment you like. But what gets in the way of us being authentic? Uh, the one thing I was thinking of was pride, uh, was what you want. You start putting yourself ahead of what you should be putting in front of uh, like looking out for the needs of other people and making sure that you're pleasing God. We generally want to portray a certain image. Uh, you know, I want to wear kind of a nicer shirt up top, uh, but it's hot in our house sometimes, so I like to wear shorts, you know. So I want to portray a certain image, and you usually want to portray a good image. And again, if, if you're doing that and you're putting your, your best side, showing your best side, there's nothing wrong with that. You're not being dishonest. But again, sometimes if your pride gets in the way, and you start bending the truth. You start being dishonest. Uh, Tina says, I think pride is a block sometimes. Uh, Joyce says, we don't want to lose face or look bad. And she agrees, yeah, that could be pride. Again, it comes back to how you either want to look or how you don't want to look. You don't want to look dishonest. You don't want to look like you've made a mistake. Uh, you don't want to look a certain way, so you, you tend to be dishonest. You tend to try to put on a false front. You tend to not be authentic. But either way... It points to putting your needs ahead of other people. Uh, you start putting yourself first. And when you start looking to yourself in that lens, that, that way that you look, uh, that perspective, you start being dishonest. You start putting that false front. You may not tell the truth in a certain situation because it makes you look bad. Uh, you might do a certain thing or look a certain way or act a certain way in a situation to make you appear uh, with skills that maybe you don't have. You know, trying to make yourself look better than what you are. So you'd rather put deception ahead of making yourself look bad. And again, that's something that I, I don't know, I can relate to that. Like, I don't want to look, I don't know, incompetent or look a certain way or, or portray a certain image. And sometimes it's very tempting to try to bend the truth, to try to, you know, if you make a mistake, you know, if I make a mistake at work, sometimes I don't want to bring it up. You know, I just try to, you know, maybe it'll just go away. You know, you try not to worry about it. And that's me putting my needs ahead of honesty, of being truthful. Uh, if you go down to Matthew 23, go jump down to verse 12. Again, this whole chapter deals with uh, Jesus' assessment to the Pharisees, and it's not so good. Uh, but one thing he presents in Matthew 23, verse 12, is a solution to this, is a way that we should be living. So Matthew 23 and verse 12 says, For those who exalt themselves will be humbled. So that would be the Pharisees in this, perspective, in this context. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. Humility. If we have that attitude of humility, that will help us be more authentic. We'll start to realize that God is in control, and we need to be honest with ourselves, and we're not perfect. You know, there's things and times that we're going to make mistakes, we're going to make errors. And if we understand that, and we understand that we need to be honest, then it'll be easier to recognize your faults. And when you recognize your faults, then you can grow. 
And you can have that attitude of humility saying, yes, I'm not perfect. I am going to make mistakes. Uh, I don't need to be number one all the time. I don't need to have this perfect image portrayed. Uh, and when we start realizing that, we have that humble attitude, we can be more authentic. It's easier to admit that, yes, I made a mistake in this case. And again, in my experience, it's often much, 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 much better to admit you made a mistake right away and deal with it than it is to put it off and hope it goes away, let it stretch on for days and weeks, and then, uh, you know, deal with it then. It's always much, much worse. It's much better just to deal with it right off the bat. There's nothing wrong with showing your best side, but that should never get to the point where you're being dishonest and putting on that false front, putting on that false face. We always have to be humble enough to recognize that we, we will make mistakes and we don't have to be perfect 100% of the time. We looked at the example of the Pharisees. Uh, they were teachers of the law at the time, teachers of the law during the time of Jesus, and they taught the Old Testament law. If you go to sec or 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. This is a, an example of Paul. So Paul is also a teacher, a teacher of the time of Jesus. And he has experience with the old law, has experience with the Old Testament. Uh, if you see his characteristics in other passages, he was, uh, you know, taught at the feet of Gamaliel. He had that he was raised as a Pharisee, and he was a Pharisee for quite a while. So he might be classed with those other Pharisees uh, by having that attitude of, of not being humble and trying to do things for the, to be seen for the praise of men. But in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 1 to 5, he presents a much different attitude and a much different quality in this passage. So 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 to 5 says, And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith may not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Quite a different attitude portrayed in those words as compared to the Pharisees talked about in Matthew 23. Uh, he's talking about he's resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. He's showing that I'm not the one with the knowledge. Jesus is the one with the knowledge. You know, I'm simply a, a conduit of spreading that message to you. Uh, he's... He came to you in weakness with fear and trembling. He's showing his vulnerability. Uh, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words. He's, he's showing that, you know, it's not me doing this. I'm not just being a very good speaker that can influence the group. He's showing it with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. He's showing that all the glory has to go to God. It's, again, very different than the Pharisees when you compare those two. Uh, they were raised in the same way. Uh, Paul was a Pharisee, and he was somebody who fit into that crowd that was discussed in Matthew 23. But you see, after he experiences the gospel, he changes that attitude. He changes the attitude of him being the greatest. And he says, no, God's the greatest. Jesus is the greatest. And I am essentially nothing. You know, I, I don't have the power. Jesus is the one who's giving me the power to flow through me. So he has that attitude of humbly, of humility. Uh, he knows serving God and others is more important than his own pride. And that's something that we need to do as well. Uh, we have to keep humble. We have to keep honest about our strengths and faults. And we have to be truthful and serve like Paul and always give the glory to God. Uh, there's a proverb that I really like. Proverbs 11. Uh, we're going to read verses 2 and 3. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 2 and 3. And this really sums up actually both of these qualities, this idea of humility and being honest. It's pretty interesting. So Proverbs 11, 2 to 3. It says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. So duplicity, how do you like that? That's something that we're being talked about. If you're not being authentic, you have two sides. You have duplicity. You have your true self, and you have that image that you're trying to portray. Again, social media, I think, is really guilty of that. Uh, you have your true self that p 
people around you may experience, your family, your close friends, they see day, that you see day to day, maybe coworkers. And then you have that image that you're portraying on social media. Uh, those things should match, at least to a certain extent. And again, you are going to want to show your best face a lot of the time on social media, but it shouldn't be dishonest. It shouldn't have that duplicity. Uh, you shouldn't have two sides to that equation there. And it touches on these two qualities to encourage that authenticity. Uh, it talks about humility. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. And again, that idea of having humility, you have to recognize that you have faults. And only when you recognize you have faults can you understand how to start working on solving those faults and getting better. With humility comes wisdom. Recognize your faults, you understand, and you try to figure out ways to get better. You get wiser after that if you live through those experiences. Then it gets into the integrity of the upright guides them. Integrity, that's where you have that honesty. And that's really what's at the core of authenticity is being honest, being truthful about what you are saying and doing and trying to match the, the person that you are with what people see on the outside. And again, if you're putting on that best uh, face, you know, showing your best side, that's not being dishonest. It's just showing your best side, your best, best truthful side of what you truly are. We are simply to be honest and truthful. Uh, it's something that is so simple, and I think everybody can understand that it's a very good thing, but I think it is something that's hard to do sometimes, especially when your pride is at stake. Somebody says, did you do this? And you're embarrassed that you did it, and you don't want to admit it, you want to lie. You want to say, no, I didn't do it, and try to put it off to the side so you're not being truthful, you're not being authentic. But we have to be honest. We have to have, uh, you know, integrity. We have to have that integrity of the upright, and that's what's going to guide us. Uh, if we're honest and truthful and faithful to God's teaching, we will be blessed. We will be blessed when we do that. And plus, we don't have to remember what lies we told people if we're honest. We don't have to try to keep this notebook of, oh, I told them that I was, you know, really good at this sport when I'm actually not, you know. So I got to make sure I don't do that around them or else they'll catch me in my lie. You know, you got to keep track of all these things. If you tell the truth all the time, you don't have to worry about that. So I encourage everybody, uh, be honest, be authentic. Uh, Make sure you have that humility. Understand that you have faults and understand that other people do understand when you show that you have faults. They'll, they'll understand because they have faults too. Be honest. Uh, don't be have that duplicity. Don't have those two sides uh, at all times. Try to make the side that you're showing people the truthful side. And again, if you're putting out those best qualities, nothing wrong with that as long as it's still truthful, as long as it's an honest uh, evaluation and, and image of yourself. Uh, let's close our study in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. Uh, thank you for this opportunity we have to look at your scripture and, and understand that we do have to have that uh, authenticity if we want to be true disciples of yours, uh, that we have to be honest, uh, that we have to have that attitude of humility, that you are the one who's in control, uh, you're the one who's teaching us the right thing, uh, that we are to follow that and do that and be honest with the people around us, be honest with ourselves so that we can... Uh, improve, that we can be more like Christ and have that attitude of, uh, of love and doing our best to please you in all the, all the situations that we're in. I pray that you can be with us as we, as we do that. I know it's a struggle for us sometimes to uh, live that honest life, and I pray that you can be with us through those situations where we are tempted to lie, that you can give us the strength to not do that. Give us the strength to be authentic in all situations. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. Again, uh, if you have any further comments, please put them in the, in the comments below. And uh, be well, be safe, and God bless.